It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is thinking outside the box, and me, Joe Steckler, is your panelist, your moderator, and your show host. So I want you to think of me as just being a visitor in your home. Today, I'm going to be your case manager. I'm just going to talk to you, and hopefully I can generate questions in your mind that you might want to think about, might think about ways you can help yourself develop your own aging and care plan, what you can do better, how you might do something that you're not doing now. But most of all, I would like for you to think about things like the Affordable Health Care Act. Certain states, at least 26 of our current states, have gone to a Medicaid managed care model where they're going to help pay for health care. We're already finding out that this system is not nearly as cost-effective or cost-containment or profit-oriented as they thought it was. We find that we're going to have a lot of growing pains with this, and this is one of the reasons that I thought a show titled Thinking Outside the Box might be beneficial to you in helping you develop your own aging and care plans, not for, only for yourself, but for family members and those you love and friends. So whatever I am able to trigger in the thought, press, thought process for you, I will give you some phone numbers that those phone numbers that you'll be able to call and talk to one of our counselors because by the time you watch this show, our new counseling network will be in place, and the phone number to call for that counseling network is 321-773-4770. That number will ring at three or four locations and will give you a counselor, a counselor who can help you answer very simple questions. Let's say, for instance, you live in Brevard County, Florida, and your daughter or your son lives in New Mexico or New York or any other state, and you're having problems managing your own care. You have enough assets to live moderately well, and you can do things to take care of yourself, but you might need some assistance in performing your activities of daily living, or you might need to have assistance in going to the doctor, transportation. Maybe you don't remember all the things that you used to remember. That's part of the aging process. That happens to all of us. But is there a reason for you not to address that? No. But can you address it cost-effectively? Yes, you can. That's the purpose of the show that I call Thinking Outside the Box. You see, we have organizations, and I had this company on, on the show. It's called Seniors Helping Seniors, and this is their brochure. And the phone number for this company, and I'm going to give you a lot of phone numbers, so have your pencil and paper ready, and if you miss out, this show is going to be on our website. The website is Helping Seniors of Brevard.com, and you can go on that website and watch this show. You can get all this information, everything I'm talking about to you today. It'll be listed there, all the phone numbers, everything. But let's say you find out that you do need help. The first thing that comes to your mind is how much is it going to cost me? You're already living, say, on Social Security, and you have maybe a modest pension coming in, 
and you have some savings. And if you protect these assets, you be able to stay in your own home. But what if you impact those assets too quickly? You won't be able to stay in your own home safely. You won't have what you need to take care of yourself. And that's the reason I want to talk about companies like Seniors Helping Seniors. I want to talk about thinking out of the box. I want you to know about organizations like Helping Seniors of Brevard County. These are nonprofit organizations designed to help you obtain information and be better educated about how you can help yourself develop your own aging and care plans. It's extremely important. I have a bunch of notes in front of me. I will refer to my notes. This is not a cut and dried presentation. It is something that I'm simply talking to you and hoping that I can stir up within you a desire to become better informed about you, how you can help yourself. And one of the things is that uh, it's important is that we've got to be attuned to what is happening with the care system. On several shows, I've discussed the fact that Florida went to what we call privatized Medicaid managed care. This sounds like a good thing, and it is a good thing, as long as we use it wisely. But if we have a pay system that says, I'll give a company $1,300 a month per patient to help take care of that patient, to keep them in their home, to keep them out of a nursing home or out of assisted living, which are more costly elements of care, I've got to do just what I say I'm going to do with that money. Companies in order to stay in business have to make a profit. The thing that we're going to have to understand and we're going to have to address in the future of affordable health care within the United States is whether or not we can pay for what we say we're going to pay for and whether we can get meaningful programs to help people. Now, let's talk about lesser elements of care and we'll work from what we can do more cost effectively to the higher cost of care. And I'm going to stay away from the higher cost of care because, in a nutshell, if you have long-term care insurance, that will help pay for long-term care. It'll pay for nursing home care. But if you don't have that, you're either going to have to pay for it with some other kind of insurance you have, or you're going to have to pay for it out of your pocket. There just is no other way unless you qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid means, basically, that you can have $2,000 worth of spendable assets. You cannot have more, say for a single person, roughly more than nineteen dollars or $20,000 worth of income a year. If you do, you're not going to qualify for Medicaid. So the burden of the cost of care is going to be solely on you, the individual. Now, how am I going to do that? It has been shown that a person, when they retire, the last salary that you earn as a working person, if you have eight times the amount of that annual income in your retirement account, you should be able to live comfortably. So that means if you were earning $50,000 when you retired, if you have $400,000 in your accounts plus Social Security, you should, if you live judiciously, you should be able to eke out a retirement living. Notice I say should. That doesn't prepare for unexpected emergencies. There are all kinds of things. That's why it's so important that you understand that there are programs, nonprofit organizations, that it can help you address these things that happen along the way and get you prepared to get in a situation where you can afford to live. Now, how can you do that? I think 
in all my talking, all the shows we've had about case management, the use of attorneys for developing estate plans, having the right kind of documents in place, this can all be done. You need to talk to an organization, a person, and that's why I keep, keep mentioning help, helping seniors of Burrard County, because that's what this organization does. It helps you get to the right information source so that you have access to all the things you need, the pegs to put it in the holes to get you through the walk of life. In developing a plan, you can have long-term care insurance. You have to have a retirement plan. You need to work with an elder law attorney. There are things that you need to do that you can you can do. You need to think about using your existing assets. How can I do a better job of managing the money I have? I myself took a look at some of my retirement accounts. I have a couple in different places. Some are doing better than others. My question to myself was, why are some performing better than others? And I'm looking into that. You should be doing the same thing too. You should not just develop a retirement plan and say that's a fait accompli. I don't need to do anymore. That's far from the truth. You need to continue to look at what is happening to your estate, to your wherewithal, to earn money, to save money, and to spend money. There are a lot of things you can do. A good estate plan is essential. And you don't have to be a millionaire to have a need for an estate plan. Good estate plans can help the average citizen live a better, more orderly, well-planned life. You need to have somebody you can talk to, somebody you can trust. It can be a family member. It can be a friend. But be very careful. I always advise people to talk to a good, solid elder law attorney. Good elder law attorneys will give you the first hour of consultation free. It will not cost you a cent. If it costs you, start looking as to why you're going to that person. Good attorneys will give somebody the opportunity to talk to them to help them develop a plan. Yes, it may cost you a thousand dollars to put legal documents in place to prepare for the future. But the converse of that is to die without a will or without a trust and have a medium sized estate, say $500,000. And many people have that without even realizing it. Once you sell a house, once you put all your possessions on the market and everything, you have accumulated a lot of wealth you don't think about. Wouldn't it be a shame to have all half of that money go to the state instead of to the family or somebody you want it to go to? If you die without a will, your estate then goes into probate. I'm not a law attorney. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm advising you to think about what you are doing or more importantly, what you're not doing. You see, the development of information and education is so important in gathering all that we need in order to put these plans in effect so that we can prepare for emergencies. Most, not all, but most of the time, we can put something in place to help somebody. Let's say you have a family member that uh, lives here in Melbourne, Florida, and you yourself live in New Mexico or Mississippi or Ohio, you name it, and you're worried about your mother or father living in their home by themselves. You talk to them on the telephone, they sound all right, all of a sudden they don't sound all right, and you begin to worry. You can't get there at a drop of a hat 
to check on them. But if you call our organization, and there are other organizations similar, but I can speak to one that I know about. If you call us at 321-473-4770 and tell us what your problem is, we can direct you to an elder law attorney, a case manager, like this organization I talked about, Seniors Helping Seniors. And think about this. For a two-hour block of service, this organization will go on and help your mother or your father prepare a meal, tidy up the house, take them to a doctor's appointment, stay with the doctor, stay with them to listen to what the doctor says, can help them do simple things around the house. A two-hour block of service costs $32. If you had them go to your mother or dad's home every day of the month, it would cost you roughly $960. And the woman, when I had her on one of our shows, says she has one client that does exactly that. She's spending $960, and it's important for you to realize this. The parent is able to stay in the home safely with this kind of assistance, so it's okay. They spend $960, whereas if they had to put them in an assisted living facility, it could cost $6,000 a month. And the chances are they probably wouldn't get the same type of care that this organization gives them on a daily basis because they wouldn't know them as well. That's why I say we need to be better informed about the programs and what's available within a community. There are other organizations like the Space Coast Center for Independent Living. I'm hard of hearing. I went to the Space Coast Center for Independent Living because I can't hear on a cell phone. I just can't understand them. They had a choice of four phones, but the, tone, the phones I can modulate or modify the tone on the phone and I can hear clear as a bell on this phone and it did not cost a cent. It is something that the state pays for, but I can understand what is being said over the phone. And I did it because I knew about it. I went and got myself checked out. It's a phone that I can understand what's being said. They will also take people in a wheelchair person. If you had to go to a doctor's appointment, they'll take you for $5 plus a certain percentage per mile. Let's say if a person had to go roughly a 30-mile round trip to go to a... Uh, a 30-mile trip to go to a, to a doctor's appointment, it might cost them $30 or $15 round trip. Certainly affordable. Certainly much cheaper than a taxi cab. And the person, the dram driver that takes you will stay with you and take you back home. It's personalized, it's safe, and somebody knows you. There's transportation programs. This same organization does home modifications. They'll go in and put a high-rise toilet in a home. If, if When a person gets older, it's hard to get down onto a toilet and get up, but they can put a higher toilet in. Cost is for the, the cost of the product. They will put it in free. If you make a donation, they use that to help somebody that can't afford it. They'll build wheelchair ramps into your home so you can get in and out of your home. They do all kinds of things. There are also things like adult day healthcare services. There are several organizations in town that have daycare services. 45, 50, 55, and $60 a day. Measure that out four or five days a week times five, four weeks in a month. And you get a cost of seven, eight hundred thousand dollars instead of a six thousand dollar nursing home or an assisted living bill. What I'm saying is there are a lot of things that can be done to help you help yourself. We have adult day health care services. We have home care services that will keep a lesser element of care. That's what this organization, Seniors Helping Seniors, does. They use older people that understand 
the needs of seniors. They can go in and help them do this. Um, we can also gradually step up care. If we have, if we find that a person is not getting the type of care that they need, we have case, a good case manager assesses the person. They assess what the immediate needs are, and then they figure out a way to bring other community assets to bear on a problem so that we can get a better overall fix on what the problem truly really is. A person can be over-medicated. A person could not have the right medications. Maybe they aren't telling their doctor that they're seeing multiple doctors. Maybe they don't tell them about the medications that they are taking. These are all important to care, especially of seniors. Um, which sort of gets me down to why we founded this organization, Seniors Helping Seniors. Our objective was twofold. We wanted to have an organization that would work with hospitals, that would work with the existing assets in the county, and also develop a source of local funding so that it wouldn't be completely dependent on the state and federal government for taking care of seniors. Senior care dollars are getting scarcer. There is there's no getting around it. Uh, the cost of care is going up. We have to do a better job of taking care of ourselves. Nobody said anything about a free lunch anywhere along the line. It's all going to cost, but it doesn't have to cost as much as we think it costs. We can do things more cost effectively, and that's the purpose of our organization, Helping Seniors of Rivera County. Again, that phone number is 321-473-4770. So what do we have that can help people help themselves? In 2000, we started a radio show called The Elder Har, which is now called Focus on Seniors. At the time, it was the third radio show in the United States that addressed senior issues. Within a month's time, there was an offer to move that show to Los Angeles with an immediate audience of 10 million people and do a three-hour daily, five-day-a-week show. We said, no, we stay here in Burrard County. The show still exists. And then in 2007, to that, we added a new program called Focus on Seniors, a television show. Under the original concept, it was called Aging with Dignity. And we now have that show called Focus on Seniors, which tied the radio show, the television show, and also our newspaper column, Focus on your seniors. It's all focused on senior issues. Now, how do we get this information out to the population at large? How do people find out about us? We said, we need a website. So we built a website. We archive all the television shows we do, all the radio shows, all the newspaper columns. Plus, we have a blog on there that addresses various things like how do you apply for Medicaid? How does Medicaid managed care affect us generally? How do we get different types of assistance? How do we get hearing impaired telephones? How do we get Medicaid, our uh, ramps built into our homes? How do we do all these things? Go to the website. You simply push in helping seniors of Brevard.com and it's all spelled out for you. We intend to improve on that. Our objective now is to build an endowment and it will become a, a, an endowment to help all seniors. This endowment will give our board of directors the latitude of saying, this organization needs a certain amount of money to continue their service, like providing transportation service to seniors. We'll write them a check for $50,000. Because by the time we have all this in place, we will have the assets. The only way we will have those assets, though, is for you, the viewers, to know what we're doing, 
to believe what we're doing and want to be part of it. The other thing that we will be able to do is to uh, help seniors understand that they're not alone. As we grow older, our loved ones die and we're left alone. We become frustrated. We don't know where to go for help. How many of you know what a case manager is? How many of you know where to go for a case manager? How many of you trust a person you call a case manager? That's why I think it's so important for the public at large to have a better understanding of what is available, what is honest, and how we can do a better job. On our website, one of our objectives and goals will be to develop a list of plumbers, handymen, different companies that will help you fairly. I had a call from a lady one time that this clean water company bulldozed her into putting in $5,000 worth of a water containment system in her house. And I went down and looked at it with my wife and the woman didn't need it at all, but she couldn't get them to take it out. That's one of the things that I hope we can prevent in the future. Will we ever stop it all? No. But I can assure you, if more organizations don't do what I'm talking about, and if more people don't pay attention to how they live their daily lives and how they access information, we will find more of this happening. And I spoke to a group of seniors recently, and a woman sitting right in front of me looked at me and she said, Mr. Steckler, how long has it been since you lived on $1,400 a month? Well, it's been a long, long time since I lived on that. Could I do it today? No, I couldn't. My insurance costs wouldn't even let me do that. But I do know and I do believe that we have the capability within Brevard County and the people living here to do a better job of making the resources available to help us do what I'm talking about. I want to thank you for watching today's episode of Focus on Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call us at 321-473-7770. For more information on senior care and resources, visit our website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.com and be sure to listen to us our Focus on Seniors on radio station, WML AM 1300 every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. And look for us in your Florida Today newspaper each Thursday morning for our Focus on Senior column in the health section. I'm Joe Steckler, and thank you for joining us today for Focus on Seniors.